Good morning all. So today we are back with another video and this is going to be a very interesting video. Um, the topic of uh, this video is going to be if you give a property as a gift to somebody, can we take it back? So if you really think about it, the movie Kantara, the loosely uh, based plot revolves around that, that there is like an ancestral property which is given as a gift and the other person wants to take it in the court. He will go to the court and he will die on the steps of the court and stuff. But even if he had gone to the court, imagine if he had gone to the court, will it, will, will that be reversed? Will those lands belonging to those um, ancestral people, uh, will it be taken away from them or what is the question, right? So what does our law say? So I'll try to be as simple as possible in this video because I want many people to get an understanding of how law works and how uh, especially uh, litigation and property and uh, land laws, how does it work and uh, what are the main crux of this? Okay, let's do this. Uh, so first of all, we have to understand the mindsets before even we jump into the law. Okay, so what is the mindset of the person who is giving a land as a gift? So any person who is giving a land as a gift gives it for a purpose. Okay. What is that purpose is what we have to identify first in the case. So based on that, we can see that what kind of law will apply for this. Okay. If it's related to some maybe a father, uh, a great grandfather wants to give a certain gift to maybe an adopted daughter or maybe uh, somebody uh, whom, you know, like maybe somebody who's working in their, in, in, in his uh, household, he wants to give a gift to that person. So in that case, what we have to understand is here the emotion is purely love and sometimes also it's survival of the other person. If that other person, whoever is receiving the gift has no means of earning livelihood and then it doesn't make any sense for us to snatch away the only uh, source which they have for livelihood. And uh, that is one purpose. Second purpose, most of the most importantly, which is done is uh, for philanthropic purpose purposes so they give that for as a charity or maybe for a cause okay and when a cause gets associated with this then we have to understand that are there any conditions when they put when they did the gift key deed in the first place okay so are is it a conditional gift deed or is it an absolute gift deed okay that's what we need to identify secondly okay and many times it so happens that I think 99% of the cases which comes to the court usually is around that where the great grandfather would have executed the deed and would have given a land as a gift and the great grandsons wants to take it back. It's always like that. So even the movie Kantara also, if you have seen that movie, it revolves around that only. So now let's come to the legality of it. Is it something which can be done? So first things first, uh, whenever a gift deed is ex being executed, there is an option to put a condition for it. For example, if you are giving a uh, property for uh, somebody as a gift for a specific purpose, then in that case, conditional gift deed can be executed. But if already the gift deed is executed, subsequently you can't add conditions to it. I hope you guys are getting this wrapped around it. I'll explain that with a case study. Okay. So recently there was a case which came. Uh, so there will be one person. His name is Siddhapa and he is the great grandfather. Okay. So he gives a certain piece of land to um, the uh, like a, to, to an educational institution. Uh, I think wait, let me tell you. The, yeah, it's a Tarala Balu Jagat Guru education. So that is the education uh, institution name. So he gives it. Uh, he gives uh, the gift to that uh, to that uh, institution, and with a condition saying that uh, keep my name for the hostel. Okay, and perhaps they he might have you know uh, he might have uh, conveyed some other uh, conditions also, but it did not get documented because we don't have any proof regarding that. So, so it, uh, he just gives a gift deed executing saying that this is what you just name the hostel on me and that's it and that's what is mentioned in the gift deed. Later on this will go on and then afterwards uh, he will die and he will make a will and he in the will he will mention this gifted property also uh, giving that to his grandsons. Okay, First of all that is not allowed but he, he does it anyway. 
So based on that will, these great grandsons go to the court saying that we need, you need to give that back because my grandfather, when he gave the land, he basically uh, put a condition saying that whatever crops which are being grown in that uh, in that area in that uh, land should be used only for the hostel students' food. Okay. Apparently, it's a very large land. Okay, and then there's some agriculture going on in that. So this condition is not mentioned in the gift deed, okay? And because of which the court says that no, this is this cannot be executed because you have not put you know conditions as such in gift deed. You are not clear with that. But the only gift, only execute, only uh, the condition which you have put is that it should be named, and they've already done it. So that's the reason why the land stays with the educational institution. So that was the verdict which was given. So from this, what do we do? What do we learn? So one is that uh, whenever documentations, I feel like people take it so. Um, I, I feel very bad that most of the cases would would actually uh, perish if the documentations are right. And when what do you mean by documentations are right? Documentations are right means you have to actually get the exact um, what the client wants, and you have to draft it. Nowadays, what happens is many people think that legal documentation is something like easy. You just go to the online something, even chat GPT also tell them to construct one document and it will be given to you. So, but what you have to understand is that this is a skill, okay, documenting, conveyancing and all is a skill. So, what do you mean by skill? It means that you have to see the bigger picture. You have to see what the client really wants to do with that property. Does it actually just wants to give the gift and uh, you know of the land and just forget like whatever you want to do, you do it? Or does he want the land to benefit a certain section of the society? Here it is students, right? So is it is it uh, that is it meeting that and everything that has to be taken care of? Okay. So if I were to do this uh, documentation, I would have put those conditions in that specifically, which states that this has to be done. These 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 things have to be met. Only then this uh, will be done, and then we put a conditional clause saying that if this is not being followed, if any time this is this is considered to be not being followed, then you can get it back. That kind of conditions you can put, and you can try to document in that way. So now done is done. Already uh, many times it's happened that it happens that only many people wash their hands off because the documentations are not correct, and it is not going to stand in the court of law. So what do you learn here? So there are basically three things what you need to learn. One is that to make sure that you get your documentations right. And two, to make sure that you read the documentations which is being drafted to understand that this is exactly what you want. And third is to make sure that you are safeguarded in every direction. In the future, if something is not going according to what you wanted to do. See here, it's I'm pretty sure this these land costed now right now costs like crores of rupees together and now that person has given it as a gift and now that the purpose for which the gift is given is if it's not being served correctly then really it's a waste the whole entire purpose of doing this and philanthropy and all those things will go waste so therefore it's always important that uh, documentation needs to be needs to be done very correctly and uh, approach an advocate and get your documentations done even if it will cost little bit less than just the printing charges I mean little bit more than the printing charges sorry uh, rather than just finding some random document from online and just printing it out and signing it and making it a legal document and then registering it and then making it perpetual so instead of doing all the circus make sure that you get your documentations right so I hope um, I added some value today and uh, now you know that uh, the gift cannot be revoked if it is not in the deed and this is specifically related to the gift deed and not the trusted deed okay trust is something it's an entirely different game altogether and i'll make a video on that on the trust properties and all the legalities on that some other day but uh, today i hope you learned about the gift deed and now you know that in kantara movie even if that guy had gone to the court he would not have got the lands. Stay safe, stay legally safe. Bye.